Coming up today, Korea rolls out a massive new banking transaction system that will make it much easier for everyone to transfer money and pay their bills. Korea's main opposition party proposes forming a panel of experts to discuss the government's plan to reintroduce state-authored history textbooks into schools. The ruling party rejects the plan. Plus, China decides to end its decades-long one-child policy. It'll now allow families to have two kids. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6am on Friday, October 30th here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. And we're going to start with news that Korea Development Bank and the Export-Import Bank of Korea have announced plans to save one of the country's biggest shipbuilders from going bust. E.G. Won starts us off. Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, Korea's second largest shipbuilder, will be supported by a vast amount of money from its creditors. The Korea Development Bank and the Export-Import Bank of Korea, also known as Korea Exim Bank, will pump in roughly 3.7 billion U.S. dollars to the company. The fund will be used for recapitalization and liquidity support. The plans to decrease the company's debt ratio from 4,000 percent to 500 percent by the end of next year. The aid will come in exchange for the shipbuilder selling of non-core assets, cutting down wages of executives by 10 to 20 percent, and downsizing some 300 manager-level officials. The company will also be pushed for privatization. After the two sides sign a memorandum of understanding by next month, the rescue funds will be gradually injected. As costs from the delayed construction of offshore facilities increase and orders are cancelled, Korea's shipbuilding industry has been suffering from a few years back. The country's second largest shipbuilder recorded an operating loss of over 3.7 billion U.S. dollars in the first three quarters of this year. However, experts doubt these measures will be enough. Ship orders are expected to be more stagnated next year, and such uncertainty is a negative factor. Creditors, on their part, believe they'll see operating profits starting next year, putting Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering's bailout under close watch. Easy one, Arirang News. Now, a new banking system is being launched in Korea that will allow people to easily switch their transaction accounts from bank to bank through an online portal. For more on the so-called Money Move system, Oh Si Young reports. Paying your bills can be a monthly hassle when you have multiple credit cards from different banks. But starting Friday, a new banking system will make all of these transactions much simpler. Korean banks are launching a new online portal that aims to simplify the way users switch their payment accounts for recurring transactions. This means customers will no longer need to call individual card companies and other creditors to change their payment accounts. Now all it takes is just a couple of clicks. Adopted by 16 banks, the service is also available for transactions with major billing companies, including telecommunications and insurance firms. And starting in February, the service will be expanded to include utility companies. This is the first financial system in the world to allow different banking institutions to be collaboratively managed. Ahead of the launch, local banks are competing to capture part of the market, which is worth over US$7 billion US dollars in annual transactions. It's important for banks to gain accounts with low-cost deposits because those accounts sweep in significant profits. So with this new system boosting the market-based competition, banks are providing more benefits for customers, creating a win-win situation for everyone. The list of benefits includes loyalty points, zero transaction fees and lower interest rates for credit card purchases. However, experts say that banks could suffer losses if customers switch around their main transaction accounts just to reap the benefits on offer. Oh Si Young, Arirang News. The National Assembly is urging the government to move the country's indigenous fighter jet project forward. The head of the Assembly's Defence Committee, Jong Du On, on Thursday highlighted the importance of technical professionalism 
and transparency in the so-called KFX project. He particularly stressed the need to show how the project's funds are being used to develop core technologies. He also suggested signing partnership contracts with foreign companies. Now, the $16 billion project came under fire after the U.S. decided not to transfer technologies key to the fighter jets development back in April. And this is information the government didn't reveal to the public until recently. The project was launched to localize production and replace 120 aging combat jets starting in 2025. Now, the leader of Korea's main opposition party has called on the government to put its plans to create a state-authored history textbook on the back burner while a social body is set up to discuss the matter. Moon Jae-in's remarks prompted an angry response from the ruling party. Park Ji-won has this report. The proposal by New Politics Alliance for Democracy leader Moon Jae-in was for the government to put a temporary halt on the textbook plan and create a social commission with history and education experts to examine the government's history textbook plan. I asked the president to postpone the government procedures for publishing the state-authored history textbook so that political parties can focus on addressing issues related to people's livelihoods that are piling up. The ruling Senori party was quick to respond with an immediate rejection. In a written statement, the party said the opposition party leader should focus on getting lawmakers to carry out their parliamentary duties, especially the passage of bills related to revitalizing the economy and next year's budget. The party had also voiced its dissatisfaction with the opposition at a regular Thursday morning meeting, making reference to recent criticism from North Korea of the government textbook plan. The main opposition party has falsely claimed the government-led history book, of which not even a single page has been written, beatifies Japan's colonial rule and the nation's dictatorial past. This is a strategy that is only benefiting North Korea by causing conflicts in the South. The country is deeply divided on the issue. Following a survey by research firm RealMeter earlier this week, roughly half of the 1,000 respondents said they are against a government history text, while nearly 45 percent said they support it. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Now, in some rather bombshell news, China says it will allow all couples to have two children after decades of its infamous one-child policy. The country's ruling Communist Party says the decision was designed to improve the balanced development of population and to deal with China's aging population. The new rule is a major liberalization of China's restrictions, which have been in place for over 35 years. They originally put in place to slow the country's population growth rate. Currently, about 30 percent of China's population is over the age of 50. The total population of the country is around 1.36 billion. Now, Republican Paul Ryan has been voted in as the new Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. The congressman from Wisconsin required, uh, re received rather, 200. 36 of the 247 Republican votes to succeed John Boehner. Ryan urged Republicans and Democrats to come together for the sake of the nation. He said the House is broken and that its members are not solving problems but adding to them. At just 45 years old, Ryan becomes the youngest Speaker of the House in nearly 150 years. American whistleblower Edward Snowden says South Korea is among the countries being spied upon by the U.S. National Security Agency. Snowden made the statement during a video conference interview with Korean reporters on Thursday. Snowden said it would be odd if South Korea was not among the countries monitored by the U.S. when other ally countries like Germany and France are subject to such monitoring. He said the data collected by the NSA was shared with the South Korean government, describing it as a proper thing to do, as uh, it has to do with sharing information on North Korea's military moves. Snowden is a former NSA subcontractor who made headlines around the world in 2013 when he leaked top secret information about the agency's surveillance activities. 
Now, a senior official from U.S. defense firm Lockheed Martin claims discussions of an official and unofficial nature are ongoing between South Korea and the United States about the possible deployment of a U.S. anti-ballistic missile system to the Korean Peninsula. Mike Trotsky, who is vice president of air and missile defense at Lockheed Martin, told reporters in Washington on Thursday, local time, that the two allies are in the early stages of talks about terminal high altitude area defense or as it's otherwise known THAAD. Now the Pentagon has yet to respond to these remarks. Seoul and Washington have maintained they have never held any formal consultations on this issue. Now North Korea and other regional security issues will top the agenda next Monday when the defense chiefs of South Korea and the United States meet in Seoul for an annual meeting. Our defense ministry correspondent Kim Hyun bin reports. U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter will be in Seoul on Sunday for talks with his South Korean counterpart, Han min Koo for the annual 47th Korea-U.S. Security Consultative Meeting. South Korean Defense Ministry officials say that the two will conduct a North Korea threat evaluation. That includes the regime's ongoing development of submarine-launched ballistic missiles and its nuclear arsenal, as well as ways to deal with the North's missile threats. The U.S. is also expected to support South Korea's development of a homegrown missile defense system, slated for completion by the mid-2020s. Regional security is also on the agenda for the meeting, and in particular trilateral defense cooperation between Seoul, Tokyo, and Washington. The two officials will also examine the mechanisms underlying their agreement to transfer wartime operational control from Washington to Seoul in 2025. Both Han and Carter will head to Malaysia on Monday for the third ASEAN Defense Minister's meeting on regional security issues. Kim Hyun bin ADN News. Now, North Korea is earning hundreds of millions of dollars every year by sending more than 50,000 people abroad to work in conditions of forced labor. Mazuki Durizman, UN Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in North Korea, raised the issue through his annual report to the UN General Assembly this week saying the regime is making up to 2.3 billion U.S. dollars a year from their confiscated salaries. Durisman said the workers, mostly sent to Russia and China to work in mining, textile and construction, are not given enough food and forced to work up to 20 hours a day with just one or two rest days a month. The special rapporteur renewed his call for the UN to refer the North Korean government to the International Criminal Court. Now, President Park Geun-hye has been emphasizing the important role women will play in reunifying the two Koreas. She's also pledged to foster a better working environment for working women here in South Korea. For more on the president's message at the 50th National Women's Conference in Seoul, Hwang sang reports. Speaking before some 3,500 female leaders, President Park called for a larger role for women in the nation's efforts to reunify Korea. It's the second time the president has attended the National Women's Conference and comes as Korea's changing demographics show there were more women than men in the population this year. But other figures show it's still a tough world for Korean women. Seoul was near the bottom among its 34 OECD peers when it came to the number of women workers in the second quarter of this year. President Park said shattering the glass ceiling for women is part of the government's job. President Park stressed that a collective internal competence is the most important factor in opening a new era towards a reunified Korean peninsula. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News.
Well, that's all we have for now on this Friday morning here in Seoul. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. We'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Goodbye.